information I had that they were indeed recognized as uh, Mossad agents who were essentially tracking uh, a Muslim activist in the New York, New Jersey area, which was known to 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 be uh, active uh, in this since the mid 90s, and uh, and so that we eventually were able to piece the story together and 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 go with it. And what eventually happened to the to the five men? They were uh, they were uh, sent home to Israel uh, in I think November, if I remember, um, uh, allegedly for uh, immigration violations. Um, and, uh, and they're home. We don't have much time, and I wanted to get to another story, which was a story of the so-called art students, Christopher Ketchum. Very briefly outline this parallel story. Uh, well, basically, the, the, uh, the, the phenomenon of the art students, for want of a better phrase, because it is truly a, a mystery, even, you know, even to me. I'm a complete agnostic about this part of the story. The these so-called art students were young Israeli men and women who were traveling the country. They were identified by the, uh, the Drug Enforcement Agency as uh, repeatedly attempting to uh, penetrate government offices, including DEA offices, and to, to sell, to try to sell uh, art, these cheap knockoff oil paintings, to uh, government officials. Now, um, after September 11th, uh, when, you know, in, in the wake of, well, in the wake of the, these sudden attacks, uh, investigators began to go back and look at the, uh, the, the nexus of art student activity with uh, the nexuses of the activities of the, Al the, the future hijackers, or the 9-11 hijackers. And um, what they found was that the art students, in many cases, were living in very close proximity to the September 11 hijackers. Many of these art students were moving large amounts of cash. Some of them were uh, were, were reportedly, according to Le Monde, uh, carrying uh, uh, cell phones provided them by the vice consul, an Israeli vice consul in the U.S. Um, they were, uh, many of them were trained, uh, highly trained in, in electronic intercept and intelligence work that was far beyond the compulsory uh, military training required by Israeli law. Uh, so these were, these are part of the, the suspicions, suspicions were aroused and they, and they remain so. Suspicions that they were tracking uh, the hijackers. That's correct. Uh, let's go to Alexander Coburn. Uh, you have published this piece. Uh, it is titled um, Cheering Movers and Art Student Spies. What did Israel know in advance of the 9-11 attacks? Who were the Israelis living next to Mohammed Atta? What was in the van on the New Jersey shore? How did two hijackers land on watch list weeks before 9-11? Who shut down Fox News? Carl Cameron. Um, <clears throat> we just have two minutes, but Talk about the way the media has covered this, why you chose to cover it, and that last story of Fox. The main thing, Amy, is that uh, basically this story, which uh, Perlman and others did, did do good work on, has been systematically um, suppressed by the media for a very long time, starting with Fox News, which killed off Cameron, the ABC News, which dropped it, and obviously there are thousands of questions which Ketchum goes into in great detail which should be the subject of congressional hearings and investigations such as was the Mossad essentially being subcontracted by the CIA to work in the United States on spying which would be illegal how much did the Israelis really know if it was a good thing for Israel maybe they withheld the final news that the thing was going to land that's a speculation of course but it should be investigated and probed it's absolutely extraordinary that Ketchum's story which has been worked on, which is a very long and complex story, could not find any outlet until a counterpunch, which is what we're here for, could publish it. It's uh, the, obviously the main reason is the word Israel. People drop it like a hot potato. As soon as you hear people saying it's a good thing for Israel, you get, the whole uh, lobby came in and had those people whipped out of the jail and sent back to Israel. And since then, all questions regarding it had been systematically choked off. I think that's the sort of you know, journalistic powder cakes. So. Alexander, this uh, story that you've published um, first was going to go to Salon.com, then The Nation? Uh, that's what I understand from Christopher. Yes, that's true. Christopher Ketchum? Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't, the editors didn't feel that um, there was any news here. Uh, and I'd like to ask Mark Perlman, were you surprised when the 9-11 when the Commission report came out that there was no mention of... Uh, at all uh, in the reports of, uh, of a possible knowledge by uh, Israeli uh, agents in this country of the attacks or tracking of some of these uh, suspects? 
Uh, y yes and no. I mean, I, I was surprised because since uh, there have been questions that are still being asked now, uh, that at least the Commission would address the, uh, the issue even to the bankers. Uh, that being said, uh, my reporting was uh, narrow, was about those movers and what they were doing, and the conclusion was that they were essentially spying uh, on, on radical activists in, in the region and that they had been let go because the American authorities had determined that they did not have foreknowledge of the attacks. Uh, which is different uh, than what the article uh, says, uh, because it, it implies that they were essentially shipped to Israel because of the Israel lobby and mm -hmm. because uh, they knew. Uh, whereas what I, what I have been able to find out is that they were sent home because they they did something they were not supposed to do and without the knowledge of the American government, which is an issue, obviously, that should be discussed publicly. That the Israelis were spying on U.S. soil. Right, without the approval of the U.S. authorities. Sometimes friendly governments uh, have agreements where they can uh, kind of like spy together. Apparently, this was a case where it was not happening. Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. Mark Perlman of The Forward, which is based in New York. Christopher Ketchum, freelance journalist, author of this latest piece uh, that appears in Counterpunch. Alexander Coburn, thanks also for joining us, editor of Counterpunch Newsletter. And that does it for our show. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Berkshire, from Doku Deuce, John Hamilton, Elizabeth Press, Aaron Mate, Lee Bjork, Jen Utes, Anna Nagara, Anurata Bhagwati, I'm Amy Goodman, Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. And we're going to continue this discussion for just another minute, especially for free speech TV viewers. Our guest, Mark Perlman of the Forward newspaper, Alexander Coburn of Counterpunch, and Christopher Ketchum, freelance journalist, who did this piece called What Did Israel Know in Advance of the 9-11 Attacks? I want to go back to Alexander Coburn on this issue of um, Carl Cameron of Fox News, Explain what happened. What does Fox have to do with this story? Well, Carl Cameron done a pretty good investigation, as, uh, as um, is outlined by Chris Ketchum in the story. Um, and uh, uh, going into the Israeli, uh, the art student aspect particularly, and this became, this, his investigation became the subject of tremendous pressure. And really, Chris should be.